remove all my stuff, like an apartment, mm -hmm. into another truck, and then go pick up a load. We ain't got no fleet. Yeah, yeah, that's exactly what they want you to do. And then you got a security guard. How long is it going to take y'all? I said, I don't know, man. Call the company because I live in this truck. So I live in this truck, and I need to move into this truck so I can live in it. So it will take however long it takes. If you have a problem with us being here, call the company. That's the other That's the other issue, which why budgeting is so important. If you teach these truck drivers, why they don't teach it. If you teach these truck drivers, okay, I can't teach you how to swim if I don't know how. But if you teach them how to budget, then they are not, they don't have a handcuff locked around their hands and a noose around their neck trying to get to the next paycheck because you taught them how to budget. So if they got to sit for a week, tell you what, I'm going to sit. If they, if they got to go home, I tell you what, they go to your truck. I'm not abandoned. I took pictures of but I got to get me a flight home. If that budgeting piece was in there, if that eating healthy piece was in there, you wouldn't be so tired because you're eating sugars and all the stuff that they sell in any fast food restaurants. Because it's not by chance that all the truck stops have fast food in them. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Then... You, you dig into their pockets because we got to pay. It makes no sense that we have to pay for parking. No sense. We buy enough fuel, food, and and patronize those places to not even have to pay for parking. I, anyway. I, mm, I, mm. I don't, okay. I, I don't, I, I, I don't know, Ram Ramona. Ramonia. I don't That's know. Okay, Ramon. I, I don't, I don't know, <laughs> Ramonia. I, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm on a, I'm on I'm on the opposite side of the fence when it comes to uh when it comes to paying for truck parking. My mm -hmm. my my thing for that is your number one number one is is private property. Right? Mm -hmm. I get it. It's, it's I get it. number one is private property and and we mm -hmm. and and we know that uh that uh that these trust stops like like to get you know like to get mm -hmm. profit you know they're they're not right. gonna make it they're not gonna make it off the fuel you know they're not gonna make it off the the uh, the two ninety nine drinks and all like that so they gotta find other ways of making a profit and I I understand that and that's where some of the drivers uh see that the that the uh that the Truck stops is kind of gouging us right. well, you know, for, for, for the profit. It. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. This I see it this way, though. I see it as they paying their employees to come out there and keep the keep the property right. clean. Right. You know, because right. us truck drivers really do some dumb ass shit oh, in, 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 yeah. in the parking lot. You know, that's why Walmart, even though Walmart is supposed to be our safe haven, you know, uh -huh, uh -huh. but Walmart, yeah. Walmart, Walmart don't want us. Hard. Yeah. Walmart don't want us in there in their parking oh, yeah. lots no more because a lot of a lot oh, yeah. of drivers disrespected. They disrespected by parking any kind of way. Oh, no. They disrespected by driving. throwing by throwing. You know, throwing things on the ground, yeah. uh, yeah, you know, course. piss bottles, shit bowls, drivers. and all like that. A lot of drivers don't have their home training. So, them same people mm -hmm. that's throwing that shit out the window, I imagine what their house looks like. And some of them, you can see what their truck look like through the windshield. Right, right. So, that's why <laughs> that's why I think that, you know, with, with, with paying for parking at the truck stops, you know, they, 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 yeah. they, they just saying, hey, you know, we... We we need to pay our we need to pay our people to come up here and clean up after you. Right now, I, I can give you that. I, I I can give you that. Like I said, in this industry, you cannot ever stop learning, and that part I see. That's the part I see. But I also think that the company that's sending you out here should at least oh, yeah. absorb some oh, of yeah. that. No, no I, now that I agree. <laughs> I I agree because if you know if we're driving your trucks, we're mm -hmm. we're driving your trucks. And parking, mm -hmm. you know, you know, a lot of people say that the biggest issue out here is the the driver shortage. No, it ain't that. No, it's the parking no. shortage. Park. It's parking the parking shortage, shortage that mm -hmm. you know. The, it, 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 see, that's another thing. See, yeah. we would talk never to park on the side unless it's, it's an emergency. I'm talking about on the off ramp, uh, on mm -hmm. the side in the emergency lane. If it's not an emergency, we will drive until we can find a safe place to park. 
I would much rather run my clock and take a DOT ding for the company than to pull my, my truck over on the side of the road and maybe kill myself or somebody else behind me. You see well, what I'm saying? Well, so we, we talk. We, 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 we can't pull off to the side of the shoulder anyway. I, I learned that the mm -hmm. hard way in my rookie season. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I used to do that a lot when I was in my car, but then it, when I'm in a mm -hmm. commercial vehicle, you know, you know, a state trooper roll up behind me. Hey, are you all right, mm -hmm. sir? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just pulled mm -hmm. I just pulled over to use the phone right quick. Well, you know, you can't be mm -hmm. in the shoulder <laughs> for that. Uh -huh. I'm like, I'm like, well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I can't be on my phone either while I'm driving. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, I thought yeah. the shoulder was like, you know, for emergency. Well, yeah mm -hmm. and no. So, <laughs> yeah. so yeah, 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 I, 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 yeah, I kind of, I kind of yeah. learned that the, the, the hard way. But back to, you know, but back to uh, what we were saying about the, you know, about the, about the parking and everything, and the companies should take, I mean, should take care of that. I agree. Mm -hmm. You know, luckily I work yeah. for, I, you know, I drive for a company out of Ohio uh, that uh -huh. does that. You know, they 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 say, hey, you know, you're driving our trucks, you're running, right. you know, you're running your clock, you're running hard. And the last thing yeah. we want to put on you is the fact that, you know, making it difficult yeah. for you to find parking and and you have to pay for it. No, we, we, we got and you. you. Know what? And some of the and companies you know, out here that does needs to do that. Well, see, you know something else you asked me. You asked me what 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 did I think need to be treat need to be taught more in school? Aside from the free trip importance and you know the budgeting, is that you need to have you need to know all your options. You know, getting paid by the mile, picking a load, you know, contracting with someone, a split, you know, six forty split. Like there's so many options out there that you can choose. Because see, for us, we tried every last one. Of them. Okay, we we started out with the mile. Then we went to straight truck. Yeah, we went to straight truck. We'll never do that again because you lose your semi job, your semi driving experience. The longer you in a straight truck, then you know that 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 puts that gap on you. You'll lose your semi experience. You had to go somewhere and get it for a year and then come back. So we tried. You know, we did the mileage since about a mile. Then we did the straight truck, which we'll never do again. Then we went to sixty forty split, and that was working with FedEx. That was okay, but we had a shitty owner, so you know we said no, we're not going to do that. And then we decided to go into a lease purchase plan. And now, <laughs> uh, we said we don't want to do that route. We don't want to go that route. Um, and that's what almost took me out of this industry because, again, my mental health, my emotional health, my physical health comes first. And I felt like somebody took something from me. So if I hadn't set myself up for that, because I was hurt, the only reason, you know, Everybody saying, well, you got to buy your truck, you got to buy your truck, got to buy your truck. You know, you get caught up in that buy your truck dream. You know, oh, I made 300000 They don't, They don't tell you that you spent 150000 So you really only made 150000 Okay, if you're good, you might have made 200000 But you're going to pay somebody $100,000 for you to run that trip. So they, 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 never tell, they, they never tell you the no. net. They they so happy no. to tell you the gross. <laughs> They oh, they yeah, love yeah. they and love they telling they me. love telling you to gross they love telling yeah, you to gross yeah. and how and and in some cases they love telling you to gross but they don't they don't uh -huh. like telling you how they got that gross that's it. and that's they it. don't like that's and they don't like to tell you the net they do what they actually uh -huh. take home and but they, no, don't but like, they, they don't like showing the feet nah <laughs> but they love telling you to gross though. Hey, I made yeah. 100K. Oh, yeah. I made 108K. Uh -huh. Okay, well, out of that 108K, how much is that is driving? How much is that yes, is uh, is is referral bonus? How much is that mm -hmm. is in incentives? How much is that is mm -hmm. in bonuses and stuff like that? Yep, yep. You know, you can't yep. tell you can't tell somebody, hey, you know, I you can make 100K at this company mm -hmm. like I did, and and say and and not tell them that you know that. You, it, not all of this is from driving. Do you know I had a I had a company tell me because we, we worked at one company that didn't give safety bonuses at all, and I said, well, you know that's kind of sad. He said, why is it going to fail? You're supposed to drive safe anyway. Why do I have to pay you to drive safe? Why do I have to put a carrot in front of you for you to drive safe? Mm. You're supposed to be driving safe for your CDL anyway. You're supposed to cover your CDL period. And I was like, you know what? You got I a point. That. Yeah, I know y'all being cheap, <laughs> but he said, "Why would I pay you to do something that you? Why would I pay you 
for you to do your, your inspection. Why would I pay? See, and that's the thing. I know this is a money-making industry, but because we are so money-hungry, nothing wrong with money. I'm not against money. I am a minimalist because I only got two feet, so I can only wear two shoes at that. So I don't need 50 pair in the closet, okay? Because then they're not being used for what they were designed to be used for on some feet. But if we were not such a money-driven society because we overbuy, we overspend. We buy shit to sit at home while we're on the road for 360 days out the year, sitting at home collecting dust, paying for light, water, all that stuff. But if we were not so money driven, then we might could learn something about this business and turn this thing around to where we knock the cattle on the highway and they poking us to go here, go here. I don't believe we would have a third of the accidents that we have. If we if we realize that this is a this is a job, but it's a but it's also a career where you have other people's lives at stake. You need to know what to do if somebody put on brakes. You need to have a plane. You need to know. Am I going to ditch this truck? My, me myself, I would rather put my truck in a ditch than run the back of somebody's van and kill their kids. I'm sorry that some people don't feel that way, but that's just me. That's that's my humility. That's my moral. I would much rather because I know what my vehicle will do. I know what it will do. So and I try just, not to put my truck and, and in just, any position that's going to harm somebody. And just imagine if you survive it, you 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 you're still going to get pulled away anyway. Oh yeah, <laughs> but you know what though? I, but I guess what I can walk away that I did not kill somebody else's life that just started. I'm that, okay with that. That's that's because, even better. Because it's damn if I do, it's damn if I do, damn if I don't. So exactly. I really take the damn if I and I, it's I and, and it's you know and it's is you know to these you know to to these people that's coming into this industry so that you guys will understand mm-hmm. that you are responsible you was thrown yes. out here you 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 the little sheep that's thrown out here amongst the wolves right. you know that's right and the company and, thing, and, and the company mm-hmm. the one thing i heard that, that being in my ear I am a professional driver. Oh yeah, yeah. They throw that word around like water. Yeah, hey, you, you're but the professional a, driver. You're professional the professional driver. Because I'm a oh, either back and drive a truck. I said, tell you what, when I sit in that seat, I'm pushing eighty thousand pounds at any given time. So I am a professional driver. I am scanning for stuff that nobody ever taught you to look for. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's my profession. So I need to be as rested healthy mentally emotionally and spiritually so that i can be a professional at my job because it can be over in a blink on eye. it can be over yep exactly so you know that's why that's why it's so important to me now at this point in my life and and my my content may change in the sense of because now that i that i because i went home 45 days i, I wasn't sure i was coming back i literally i meant what i said on that post I said, look, y'all gonna get these CDLs, you know, and fuck off. That's what I said to the industry. But what I, I'm not going, I'm not going to let this industry beat me down because I, I'm stronger than that. But what I can do, if I can't change for one person at a time's mindset, I, I want to show you how you can work out. Like I was like, well, Link, I can't get in no gym. I got me some veins. All I need is some resistance veins. Well, guess what? Ain't gonna do me no good if it's sitting in a box behind my feet. And I don't tell the people I'm driving for, listen, give me my 34. Stand on my 34 because number one, it's owed to me. It's legally mine. So I can prep for the week. I can wash everything I need to wash. I might not do nothing but sleep. But I'm taken back from the beginning of what they tell you. This is what you deserve. This is what you are owed. This is what's law. Okay, you gotta get to sleep. You know, you got you got to get some rest. You know, you can't drive or such such. such. I don't have to drive eleven hours. That's the first thing. I don't have to drive eleven hours. Now my husband can run circles around me, but my main goal right now is in in twenty twenty two. Number one, I'm writing two books. One is my life story, but number two is about this industry, and it's not about a bashing of the industry. It's not. That's not. It's plenty of people we bashing each other over here. It's truck job. My goal is to try to get to these newbies that don't know nothing because no, the oldies and the old timers aren't telling them nothing. I'm not no old time. I ain't been out here 20 years. But I ain't got to be out here for five to know that this industry will chew you up and spit you out 
and they pick you up off the ground, toss you to the side, and throw another piece of gum in the seat. You know, drivers, you know, fear a lot of things in trucking. Since uh-huh. you've been since mm-hmm. you've been out here for three years with uh, along with your husband, what are some of the biggest fears? Uh, what are some of your biggest fear as a driver? Um, I was just telling my husband this the other day, and this was before I got off the truck. I said, "Honey," I said, "Um, every time I get in that seat, all I can think about is will I survive an accident, and will the people that are involved in an accident will they survive?" My biggest fear is that truck. I mean, my biggest fear is not being alert enough, not being, uh, you know, uh, uh, healthy enough. You know, what if I, if I, if I don't take care of my heart, I can have a heart attack. At, at, I may be gone, but where's my truck going? You know, my partner is in the back. My life partner and my little four pound dog is in the back. I got precious cargo. I'm not talking about that load. I'm talking about my, me and my husband, my dog, my, you know, Mary Kay that's on her way to a Mary Kay meeting. You know, Buster, they just got his license at 16. My biggest fear in this industry is nothing except for not being able to handle that truck and make sure that I know that this truck is a moving bullet. So my biggest fear is not about money because I go home and sit and be broke. I don't care. But my biggest fear is coming across someone that's not trained. I watch these trucks like five feet, like not even, I don't know, like that, 12, 12, maybe five feet behind these little cars, behind other trucks. I'm saying to myself, where are you going to go if that truck goes, is that truck in front of you stop? Well, my biggest fear in this industry is killing myself or killing someone else. Mm. One, one, period. That's what's up. Mar- Miranda. Mar- Reminder. Reminder. <laughs> <laughs> uh, shout right. out, shout out, shout out to you, little lady. Thank you very much for coming on to the show, man. You, I mean, like I said, the conversation that I'm—that's what we do over here. We have conversations. We don't do interviews. We don't do, you know, we we yeah. we conversate. We have genuine conversations. Yeah. That's why the best conversation starts over here on the Lockout Man yeah. Podcast Show. Let's. Listen here, okay. listen, listen here, Ramonda. Uh, before you get on up out of here, all right. Mm-hmm. Before you get on up out of here, how has it been uh, trucking with your husband? What was, what was some of the favorite sights or experiences you guys have encountered oh, while y'all was God. while y'all well, was out trucking? Well, the reason why I said this, okay, so what I'm going to tell you, so me and my husband before we got on the truck, we said, listen trucking comes second. If our marriage begins to suffer, we come off this truck and fix that. And then we go back. So we, I promise each other was we weren't going to let this industry come between us because I see it happen all the time. But for me, the the most exciting time, I had never been to California. I ain't going back. Now, I can't stand going to California, so I'm not doing the cross-country trips anymore. But when we popped over, I think we were headed either into Los Angeles, but I couldn't tell you where it was. But we popped over this hill and they had all this green, you know, I'm sure it was man-made, they laid it down, but then they had all these uh, wind uh, turbines going. And I had always seen them on TV, but I had never seen them in person. And when I tell you what, again, with us being minimalist, I said, you know what? I said, look at this. It was gorgeous, gorgeous sight. Now, I get headaches in high altitudes, and I can't breathe. So, again, that's my that's being mindful of my health that you can't push me to go to California. But, when I when I popped over the hill, I said, "Man, they got it." And when I say they got it, the government, other people that power that be that can afford to put them windmills on them hills, I said, "Man, that's free air. I get it. That's that, that's free air. You know, they they got fossil fuels. You know, they're trying to run these things." But I, when I got to California, I said, "Man, we haven't even scratched the surface of what we see." So my first trip to California and going through like New Mexico and Arizona. And he, and it was, I mean, for me, if, if I could settle down and be near family, I would be either in New Mexico, Arizona, or Nevada, period. Like that, that would be the place that I would settle down. So for us, um, our, our, our best times was in California. We, we found this place called uh, Local Taco or, or, no, Chronic Taco. That's <laughs> Chronic Taco. And when I tell you that was the best dang taco I'd ever eaten in my life, um, it, it was kind of, it was kind of right up there with a hot dog from New York. My, my husband's from Staten Island, so he kept telling me about these nasty hot dogs on the street vendors. But when I got there, I'm telling you, that's all. Um, 
That's for us, though. But for us, though, any trip that we take, because we're doing it together, we try our best to make sure we enjoy it. And that's why we're doing a change in industry, because it's not enjoyable anymore. It's, it's getting to the point where it's miserable. You know, it's like, I don't, I don't want to drive to California. I'm not going to California anymore. I'm done traveling from and I'm done traveling from North Carolina to the tip of California and then turn around and coming right back without a 34. That's, that's what's up man that's what's up uh last but not least man you know we we drivers out here we we go to a lot of truck stops now my my thing you know for truck stops i'm i'm not a fan of truck stops i mean i i try not to <laughs> if i if i don't get there if i don't get there at the truck stop early enough to get a parking spot like uh-huh. out of the way I I tend mm-hmm. not, I, I tend to use my I tend to use my trucker's path and find something uh something alternative, but right truck stops you know we got to fuel up so we got to stop at a truck stop. What is some things mm-hmm. What is some things that you that you hate at a truck stop? Um the the inability of other truckers to help other truckers get in spots. I hate that. Um I I also just like that when you get out, the cement smells like piss and shit. <laughs> I don't like that. Um, I don't like that it's so packed to the point you can't find a truck stop, you know. And I also don't like that you cannot find a healthy meal inside of a truck stop. Now, I know how to go in there and pick out, you know, I go in there and I get the, the broccoli, the carrots and stuff, and then I go cook it up in my truck. You know, they got the raw broccoli and the carrots and you know, I go to Subway and get green peppers and onions. Oh, I can find a healthy meal, but I just don't like that it seems like we bothering people when we come to the truck stop. Like you don't you don't wanna serve me you don't wanna you know, like I'm I'm bothering you at your job that you get paid for. You know. Mm-hmm. Um so I, the truck stop to me and see I don't have a problem with my business, I'm gonna tell you why. Those are somebody's daughters, somebody's mother, somebody's sisters. I mean, maybe it'd be somebody's brother, but they need help, and, and they out here for a reason. I ain't never seen, I mean, I ain't talked to a lot of them, but I've been there. And when I say I've been there, I've been there. It's part of my story. But I just don't, I just feel like that the truck stops are just looked at like they nasty, which they are. But I just don't like that I don't feel welcome at a lot of truck stops that I go. I just don't. And if we not your business again, it goes back to if we stop parking here, it's like you said. You're not gonna pay your bills with two hundred ninety cents soda. You're not gonna get your money off the fuel. If we stop parking and paying without asking for things that we need as truckers, then you won't have a business. So we wash each other's hands. I wash yours, you wash mine. But somewhere somebody washing in a pail that I don't know nothing about because we're not doing that as a you know as an industry. So all right. But look, man, I gotta get out of here. I got a, uh, a rental car. We got to return, man. Look, my husband's stuck on that charger. If we got a charger for a rental car, so I'm trying to hurry up and get out, get him out from under the seat. <laughs> All right. Hey, listen, uh, Ramona, thank you very much. I really do appreciate the time, man, and the conversation. Very, very. And don't let this be the last time we talk. Don't no, no, we're we gonna, we no, we gonna have to. No, we're gonna have to come back, man. You over here talking about okay. you was in that profession back in the day. We we gotta yeah. uh-huh. we, we we gotta talk about that, man. So yeah, Ramona, I don't have no you. Problem with that. You take it easy. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming it's on. Good. And you guys, right. if y'all are interested in uh, following Ramona, she is on TikTok. What's your TikTok? It's Ramona Myers. Keeping on Ramona Myers. Pretty much that's it. Ramona Myers, my whole name. <laughs> all right, all right. On TikTok, make sure you guys catch her. Thank you very much, ma'am. You have a happy Thank holidays, you. and you take care of yourself. All right, you too, and be safe, man. All right, now. <laughs>